That's trucking, right? I am here in Illinois. Not up in Chicago, but I'm here in Illinois. Just got finished dropping my load. I'm kind of glad that he got me in. I got, <laughs> got down here at about 8.30. I came over to Denny's. Grab me late night dinner. Taking my evening walk right quick in this plaza where there's no semi truck parking. <laughs> no semi truck parking. No, they don't want you to bobtail, nor if you have a tractor and trailer. Even though, you know, you could, you know could but there are signs everywhere that says no semi truck parking and if you do park here you are subject to get told in other words you might be subject just to get the boot put on okay <coughs> <coughs> No COVID, <laughs> no COVID. Um, still tripping on the events that occurred over the past weekend, over the past week. This is a new week. Hopefully a lot should have died down by now, but a lot of these cities are a little bit more prepared than what they were last week. Uh, a lot more businesses has boarded up. They took precautions. They boarded up. And uh, if protesters, looters, rioters should flare up again, they are a little bit prepared. Um, truck drivers, you know, go to the dollar store and get yourself a lock, uh, a $2 lock, $3 lock, or go to, uh, the truck stops, get yourself a pad lock and lock your, lock your trailer doors, you know, lock your trailer doors, stay safe. You know, I mean, situations going on. I had a comment that said he didn't agree with me on my on what I would have did in the FedEx driver situation. Okay, I I got you. That's your opinion. You you we good, but good, bro. I I want to get home. You know, of course there's insurance on the packages. Of course FedEx is going to cover what was lost, you know. But still, though, a gang of angry protesters, protesters around my truck, banging, knocking, knocking and banging, scaring the fuck out of me. I'm gone. I'm moving out. I'm gonna try not to hit him, but I'm I'm gonna move out. I gotta go. That's what I'm gonna do. You know, you're talking about I I don't need to be a truck driver, bro. I've been driving for five years now, and I never seen I never seen this type of this type of stuff in my in in my time of driving. You know. I know people need to be heard. They do. You know, people need to be heard. But this uh, destruction of property, this uh, destruction of property ain't nothing but nothing but opportunist taking uh, taking advantage of the situation. And that's what it is. They taking advantage of the situation. You know. And to be honest with you, from the videos I've seen, 
from the videos I've seen, they're all white guys. They're all white people. I've seen this video up in Los Angeles. There was, there was white guys that was trying to break into that one store. It was a white guy that was burning the DMV. See, the way I see it, the way I see it, it's like follow the leader. You know what I'm saying? It's like putting a carrot in front of the rabbit. It's like putting a bone in front of a hungry dog. That's what it is. You, you got some guys down there, that, you know, that's protesting. They, they mindset is on the situation, right? Their mindset is, I'm going to go down here, protest. I want my voice heard. We're sick and tired of being sick and tired. We're sick and tired of every year, every six months, every three months, we see somebody getting hurt by the man you know what i'm saying we see videos of the man that just taking just taking a, his power of authority to the next level you know the cockiness you know i i looked at the i looked at the video again i'm not going to talk about it but i looked at it again and again analyzed it and again and I stand by what I said. I stand by that. If the people would have sacrificed themselves, if they would have sacrificed themselves, I think the man will be alive today, right now, as we speak. You know, that's what I think. I think the man will be alive today. But I see way too many people testing the man. Testing the man. You know what I'm saying? We don't see that. We don't see people testing the man. You know? Oh, I'm not going to do this. I'm going to be smart mouth and all like that. Which, which, which triggers them. I already said that. Cops... <laughs> It's a different breed of people, man. When you become a cop, you, you become a different breed of person. That cockiness comes into play. If you don't do what they tell you to do, that cockiness comes into play. Hey, step out of the car. No, sir. I don't want to step out. I said step out of the car. I'm sorry, sir. For my own protection and yours, I don't want to step out of the fucking car. They are taught to use their voice as a command of an authority think about it think about it when, when y'all watch cops y'all watch live uh, live uh, PD y'all watch shows like that and y'all y'all see how the voice of calmness becomes the voice of authority when a person is not doing what they are asked to do. Just think about that for a little bit. Think about it. Think about that for a little bit. You know what I'm saying? And then, once it escalates to that point of, of, of excessive force, I guess, Cops don't think about that when they don't think about the, the excessive force. It's only after that the people look at it and then we'll realize that, hey, maybe that was, that was too much force used on that young man. They don't think of the consequences. This like how, this like how people tell you, yo, Everything comes with consequences. Well, that goes for the cop too, right? Consequences. People don't think of the consequences of their actions. So, let's see about the situation. 
Man had his foot, had his knee on the dude's neck. He's not thinking about the consequences. His, everybody crowding around saying, yo, that's wrong, that's wrong. He can't breathe, he can't breathe. Get up off of him, get up off of him. That cockiness comes into play. That cockiness comes into play. And it's that cockiness that gives them, that gives them, uh, it's that cockiness that gives them a, the, the above the law status, I think. Above the law status. Okay, well, I'm doing my job. He's resisting arrest. I'm restraining him by any means necessary. And unfortunately for that cop, it was the knee in the neck while the two other, or three, three now, three, well, two, two other guys is putting the restraints on him. Okay? Yep. Follow me now. Now, of course, common sense. You know, I'm looking at the video, you looking at the video. We we looking at the video and figuring common sense. Common sense would have be like, hey, maybe we should, you know, there's a crowd gathering. A crowd gathering up. Maybe we should get this man off the ground and put him in the car. Put him in the car, right? That's common sense, right? Common sense says, get the man off the ground, put him in the car. He was already restrained. We already got the handcuffs on him and we, we got the zip ties, okay? So, but that's, that's us looking at it from a perspective of common sense. At that time, common sense wasn't being wasn't being played. Cockiness came into play. Oh well, I I got control over this guy. I got control over this guy. He ain't going nowhere. Knee on the neck, face down, while my buddies is putting handcuffs on him. But then I, I look at all these other videos. Alright. I hear y'all. I see y'all. I feel y'all pain. Y'all want to be heard. It's it's way too many police brutalities out here. But you got to realize something. There's good cops. And then there's bad cops. <laughs> Unfortunately. Hold on. Let me, let me stop. It's just like comments compliments and then there's uh uh there's compliments and then there's uh reports if i'm saying that right let me let me think all right let me let me break it down so you guys can understand you never hear nobody complimenting on nothing if you see somebody doing good you rarely hear that you rarely see anybody doing good you never you never get that call you never get you know you never get that call you never see anybody saying thank you thank you very much thanks for your help thanks this thanks that you know what i'm saying same thing for a trucker you never hear nobody say thank you truckers or nothing like that you never hear that but the complaints oh you get a lot of that same thing with we're seeing the bad cops out here. We don't see the good cops. We see all of the bad ones. The ones that's the ones that knee in the neck, the arm around the throat, uh excessive force cop. Those the ones we see. Those the ones, it's like same thing with the trucker. How's my driving? Oh well, he cut me off or He's doing this or he's doing that, uh, yada, 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 yada. But the compliments, 
it's far and few in between. You, you probably might just get one. Hey, this nice trucker pulled over to the side and helped me change my tire. Or, oh, hey, this nice trucker did this. Or, hey, thank you. You never get that. You never get that. I was a roadside, of, roadside guy for S amount of years. And I, I, I tell everybody, the ones that say thank you, thank you for changing my tire. Thank you for getting me in my car. Thank you for bringing me that fuel. And I tell them all the time, I say, hey, I appreciate that. But why don't you call the, why don't you call the company? They got an 800. I tell them, I give them the number, 800, yada, yada, yada. Call that number and let them know ERS Lockouts did a good job for you. Not because of the bonus, but just because of, you know, we, we get accolades. You know what I'm saying? Accolades. That's the word I'm looking for. Accolades. But the same thing for the cops. You got good cops and you got bad cops, but you see more of the bad cops than you will see the good cops. Same thing with the protesters. You got peaceful protesters and then you got the violent protesters. You don't see the peaceful ones because there's always somebody in the group that makes it fucked up, right? You don't see them. You see the you see the looters, you see the you see the looters, you see the rioters, you see the the violence. That's what you see. That's what you see. The good ones, far and few in between. Far and few in between. Now, if you want to say, hey, I blame mainstream media, go ahead. I agree with you. I agree with you. Because how many times has mainstream media showed the, either showed the video or showed that picture of the knee and the neck? Plenty of times, right? Well, breaking news about uh, Derek Chauvin, the former cop now in prison, in prison cop was the one that had the knee on the neck. Here's the picture. You know what I'm saying? They showed that plenty of times and then far and few in between, then you get a good cop doing something nice for somebody or a good cop taking the knee with the protesters a good cop ha hugging one of the protesters and say yo i feel your pain same thing with the with the looters now before i get up out of here let me just say this let me just say this before i get up out of here tonight <laughs> the looters man <laughs> The looters. A guy, I've seen the video of a guy that says, Yo, we have to destroy things in order to be heard. Really? 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 You know, <laughs> what that got to do with the situation up in Minnesota? What all this looting, loot, looting in in Los Angeles, Cleveland, Columbus, uh, Washington D.C. What's what's all that got to do with George Floyd? Absolutely, positively nothing. This is for your own satisfied. Then you y'all using this uh y'all using this as an excuse, y'all using this using this as a as a clutch, y'all using this just to just to get, do for you. Y'all destroying your own neighborhoods, man. Yeah, I showed I seen a video of a dude trying to break into an ATM. What was the point of that? People in Los Angeles, man, they got hit hard. Uh, down there on Rodale Drive, they got hit hard. And what that had to do with 
anything. But I would say this. Debate me on this. Debate me. All right? Debate me on this. I've seen it. White people. No disrespect. Because I got a lot of white fans. I got a lot of white friends. And I got a lot of white subscribers. No disrespect to them. If they stand together with me, I am good. Stand together with me. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. But if you guys, if you guys feel that, hey, I, I'm glad, with, I'm, I'm glad what they're doing, then I got a problem with that. It's like, like, the white guy just throw a brick through, through Macy's, and I'm just using Macy's as an example. They throw a brick through Macy's, and then that's just a call to arms. Everybody is gonna flock in there and rob and loot the place. Who initiated it? Go back and watch the videos. It's all over YouTube. It's all over social media. You know, white girl spraying Black Lives Matter on on a Starbucks. Now a cop or the owner comes back and they see Black Lives Matter. Huh. Somebody black must have spray painted the shit on there. But no, it was a white woman. Down, it's another video of a white. Now, I commend this white woman. It was the white guys that was trying to bust into a, a dick sporting goods. I think that's what it was. But a white woman went over there, stood in front of it, trying to deter them. What they do, they violently tossed her to the ground. Get the fuck out of the way. This don't have nothing to do with you. She's standing there like, yo, this don't have nothing to do with the protest. What you doing? What are you doing? Get out the way. It's a, uh, just look for the video. I, you know what? I'll, I'll probably tag the video. I don't, I'm not sure if I still got it, but I'll tag the video. It's a news video. I think it's Inside Edition or some shit like that. But it is what it is. And let just let me say for my truck drivers out there, I'm with you. I, I am with you for whatever you do to protect yourself. I am 100% with you. If you decide to drive the fuck off, drive the fuck off. Keep your doors locked. If all these motherfuckers climb up and swarm your shit, yo, hit that horn, put that motherfucker in gear, and get the fuck out. Now, I don't know what was with that dude on I-35, you know, calling himself bailing through the through the crowd maybe he should have just crept through the crowd but i want it's not me that want to know this but one of my subscribers asked why the fuck he stopped <laughs> like he bailed through everybody was moving out the way why the fuck he stopped and then as soon now i, I don't know if you guys seen that video but as soon as they pulled him out, it was a woman in the black in the background said, "Kill him, kill him, kill him!" Like, yeah, kill him, kill that man. Listen to the video close. It was at at one twenty four, I think, because it's only a two minute video. But at one twenty twenty ish, something like that. She says, kill him. And then around the two o'clock mark, she said, kill that man. Kill him. My I agree with my subscriber. Why did he stop? Why did he stop? I'm sorry. I, I mean, I personally wouldn't probably do that. But I'm just saying... If he's going to continue barreling through, 
He should have kept on going. They they all would have got out the way. But if you seen the aerial view, they all swarmed at him like like ants on a on a sugar cube. I mean, they just like the zombie apocalypse got up on that motherfucker for real. That was something. Oh my god, that was something right out of fucking uh Resident Evil movie. Well, I think it was the third the, the which one was garbage? Not the, well. The first one was good. The second one was semi. The third one was garbage. Yeah, it was that one where that one tank tanker truck and I, they they all swarmed that truck. That's how that was when they was on that tanker guy. <laughs> That's how they was. It was they was just like that. But um, listen here, I'm I'm for my truck drivers. I'm I'm for them to protect themselves in this. <laughs> In this crazy world, man. It's unfortunate that happened. Hopefully the proper justice will come. I mean, if you like me and everybody else, I mean, dude probably might just get five years. Maybe two years. You know what I'm saying? Just remember, man, cops is wired different. Don't let me... Don't give them no reason. Don't give them no reason. There ain't no telling. There ain't no telling if they came off of a came off of a fucked up stop and then they're gonna take it out on you. Don't give them a reason, man. Have your shit ready. Have your credentials ready. Have your credentials ready. Your driver's license, insurance. If you're a truck driver, just you know have the whole book ready. And. Let them go back to the car. Let them run it. If they're going to give you a ticket, fight it. If they're not going to give you a ticket, thank you. Please come again. Don't give them. Don't give them no reason. That's all. That's all I'm saying. Don't give them no reason, man. You know, I tell my son that all the time. I tell my son that all the time, you know. Do not give a cop any reason to fuck with you than what they already pulling you over for. They're going to give you a ticket, get the ticket, fight it in court. You know, trust me, they face will drop when you show up in court. See, they anticipate you not showing up in court. <laughs> Take my word for it. I went to court plenty of times. And the last time I went, that cop's face I, it was beautiful his eyes was open like yeah I'm here cause you gave me a ticket saying that I did 35 in the 25 and the speed limit is 35 I came there prepared y'all I had the video I had the video of the interaction and the video of the of the speed limit I had all of that I had all of that I presented that to the court. The judge looked at me. She looked at the she looked at the prosecutor and the cop that was sitting right there next to her. She says, uh, Mr. Mr. G, case dismissed. I said, thank you very much. She didn't even bother to ask the um officer or anything. She asked me, did I have anything to say? I said, ma'am, not guilty. Here's, she said, what you wanna, what you wanna present to the court? I gave the video to the judge to watch, gave the video to the prosecutor and the cop to watch. The the, the judge looked at looked at the cop and only asked the cop one thing. She said, speed limit here is 35. He was going 35. Dude said, well. The speed limit posted was 25. No. The speed limit that was 25 was back up on 102nd and St. Clair. But the speed limit where you caught me at on 100 and what's that? 100 and no, by Lakeshore or Lakeside. It was by Lakeside. And the speed limit there is 35. 
I said that's where you I said that's where you got me at, uh ma'am. Oh, okay, all right, case dismissed. Next, next case. So that's all y'all gotta do. Get pulled over by a cop. Let him write you a ticket if he's gonna write one. Take the court, take it to court. Make sure y'all video. Cause they they they're gonna take your phone anyway. You know, if they stop the video or try to, you know, stop the video and all like that, make sure it uploads to the cloud so you'll still have it. That's trucking. That's trucking, y'all. That's trucking. Uh, you guys take it easy. Y'all stay blessed. I'll come back at y'all with another video. Like, subscribe, comment, share. And hit that all, hit that bell and that all button. This lockout man, that's trucking, y'all. I'll holler at you later. Peace.